A couple of weeks ago, Investigation Discovery released their trailer for their documentary entitled Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. This has been something that has been talked about for a while. People have made videos about certain people in this situation. What happened? In the trailer, they left a little teaser and there was like no face at the end. For a couple days, people speculated. I speculated. I thought it was going to be like Amanda Bynes at the end that they were talking about. There was another trailer this week. They revealed the person that they were I guess talking to it is also someone that has been a child star from the nickelodeon realm that person that walked out was drake bell so that my friends is why we are here today yeah i'm back but also i'm black Hey, what is up everybody? Yes, I have returned to your phone, your computer, your TV, your tablet, your laptop. I don't know what you're watching me on right now at this very moment, but welcome back. It's me, it's Malcolm, and today. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I just wait, want to get into it. This is a video that I've been wanting to make for a good minute since I've seen the trailer drop, but I kind of wanted to wait till after the docu-series came out to give my full reactions however comma some stuff has come to light recently and i couldn't hold it in anymore so this will be kind of like my pre reaction to the reaction i guess let's just get into it we're talking about the docuseries that drake bell was just revealed to be in there have been other stars in this docuseries one being alexa nicholas who has been very vocal about how when they were a minor, they were not protected by Nickelodeon of all studios. So we're gonna talk about that as well. I have some articles to read, so I'll be looking at the screen a lot. So uh, bear with me. I also don't have my contacts on right now. It's like one, two in the morning right now. So I'm just kind of here. We're free balling once again. We're just gonna talk. I'm gonna give some thoughts. And honestly, I want to give my reasoning is why as to why this conversation is important as a 30 year old right i have loved the golden age of disney of nickelodeon of all the kids friendly networks right i was a kid at the time i was a teenager at the time of course but as I am now 30 years old and seeing how these child actors that are now growing up, obviously some of them are older than me, speaking their truth, talking about what happened behind the scenes of the times where I would laugh at the screen or I would, you know, think a skit was funny, things like that, right? Long story short, I really wasn't, you know, that much of an outgoing person. The only like real friends I really like engaged with were the pretend ones I found on TV, uh, what have you. So for me, nostalgia is definitely deep, deep within my heart. And to know that people that I adored when I was younger, going through all these traumatic things that I, of course, did not know about, it kind of breaks my heart to see how it affects them to this day. As someone that loves nostalgia, love the golden age of you know disney and nickelodeon and things like that i just feel that i want to you know do what i can to give these former actors uh some are still acting to this day the most support that i can because they were there for me and i feel like it's time to give it back to them so I would like to be there for them. So that's kind of why I want to talk about this. Let's just talk about, I guess, where we're at right now. Okay. As we can see from this article um, from the Daily Beast, and I will be linking are the, all the articles that I am referencing in the comment section below. Reason why I will not put it in my description is because there are obviously keywords in the articles that will get my uh, video flagged and it will be pushed out. And I, this is one of those videos that I would like to be pushed out 
not because I want the money, not because of any of that, but I just definitely want to make sure the message reaches as many uh, audiences as it can. That's where the article links will be. From the Daily Beast article um, about Drake Bell, um, let's just read some excerpts. It says, the story a Drake Bell is expected to share will come just weeks after former Boy Meets World stars Daniel, Ryder, and Will reflected on their history with Brian Peck, who has no relation to Josh Peck. I just want to put that out there. I know they have the same last name. They're not related. That's I just wanted to put that out there. Basically, the Boy Meets World stars recall their time with Brian Peck on their podcast and they were joined by a family therapist i don't remember seeing them in the trailer but it does say in the article that they were contacted by the quiet on set docuseries production uh to discuss how brian peck had and manipulated them what makes this a big deal is that drake bell alleges for the first time in this docuseries that former nickelodeon dialogue coach Brian Peck was sexually abusive to him as a child, coming forward as the unnamed child actor in the 2004 conviction that Brian Peck, I think he had to take it, and he is now a registered sex offender, which is a huge deal um, that I'm going to bring up later, and it's probably something a lot of people knew, but this is just more so for people that did not know who Brian Peck was. Just going to bring this up now. He is still allowed to work around children. Even saying that out loud, that he is still allowed to work around children in Hollywood as a registered offender. Something about that really doesn't sit right with me. And this is... Who, for those people that do not know who Brian Peck is, I'm just going to read a quick bio about who he is. I know a lot of you do not care, but this, again, is for people that really do not know anything about this. Brian Peck is a Jewish American actor, narrator, and filmmaker from Huntington, Indiana, who acted in various films, shows, and video games, including The Amanda Show, which is what Drake Bell was on, um, X-Men, X2, X-Men United, Return of the Living Dead, Jack and Dexter, The Precursor Legacy, Forever Strong, Love Direct, Holes, Good Burger, another Nickelodeon production, and The Willies. He frequently collaborated with Brian Singer and Daniel Schneider. Dan Schneider, who has also been alleged to be very sexually aggressive to... Um, the underage actors on his set. I think Danielle Monet uh, came out with a story, and I think I'm going to read it a little bit later, but just bringing it up now, I think Danielle Monet bring, brought up a story about how she felt uncomfortable filming a scene because it felt very, like, sexual. So we're going to talk about that as well because Daniel Schneider definitely plays a big part in these in this uh docuseries that is coming out and i just want to point this out now and i don't know if the investigation discovery team did this on purpose but i did notice that the docuseries comes out in a two-parter on march 17th and march 18th of 2024 of this year what makes this very significant and again i don't know if this was like planned but i found it very telling in a good way that this docuseries is coming out around the kids choice awards which is one of nickelodeon's biggest nights of their calendar year and i find it also very weird that nickelodeon has not really announced anything about their kids choice awards there's no host being announced right now because their kids choice awards usually takes around place around now which is like in the middle of March to the beginning of April. And if you even type in 2024 Kitsch Choice Awards, and I looked it up like several times before I started filming, there is no information about it. The only thing you'll get is a link to the 2023 Kitsch Choice Awards with the nominees and the winners. 
So I don't know if Nickelodeon is hoping that this docuseries will pass and blow over and they won't get any flack, or maybe they know the jig is up and maybe they might even postpone the Kids' Choice Awards until it's safer PR-wise to do so. Again, just a little theory out there. I'm just saying I have seen the Kids' Choice Awards announcements before. They do not wait this long, and it's very telling that nobody knows any information about it. So I just wanted to point that out myself. For those that still do not know who Brian Peck is, I'm gonna put a picture of him here. This is Brian Peck on the set of The Amanda Show as Pickle Boy, who was kind of like a running gag, one-off character. There are some clips from the Pickle Boy bit in The Amanda Show that if you look back at it now, it comes off very suggestive. It comes off kind of inappropriate. I think Alexa Nicholas actually found a clip and put it on her TikTok account. So if you wanna go find it, just go on Alexa Nicholas's uh, TikTok. Um, you'll hear you'll hear some of the jokes and you'll hear the innuendos within it. I think Alexa Nicholas also talks about a G-hole joke. Uh, like, you know, glory, you know, that kind of hole. There's, she talks about the, like, there's a joke about that in a kid's show. And it is trippy to me. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent here, but this will all connect, I promise. I promise this will not be a super long video. The way that I am older now and realize how many adult jokes are in old Nickelodeon shows really is alarming. And I'm kind of, in a way, upset I did not see it sooner. But once you start having these compilation videos online and, you know, the memes about feet, for for those that do not know, apparently Dan Schneider has, a, like, a thing with feet, which is why you see it in so many of the shows that he is a part of. It's just so weird to me. That's That's all I'll say because I'm trying to keep my composure here. That is kind of who this Brian Peck person is, what he looks like. Um, yes, he's still working with kids or around kids. This is from a 2015 article from Daily Mail, and it pretty much says the following. Remember, this is back in 2015, nine years ago. Brian Peck served 16 months in prison after committing two counts of abusing a Nickelodeon child actor. He was charged with eight counts of sexual abuse, including abuse by anesthesia or controlled substance. 54 at the time, uh, who was in two X movies and all three Living Dead movies, is now a featured controver controversial documentary on a P abuse in Hollywood. Since release from prison, he has been dial he has been a dialogue coach, worked on Disney series, and played a teacher and claims to be a friend of Charlie Sheen. Just so many strikes here. Only banned from direct contact with children. So he is able to work with children on children's series and sets with underage actors. And this is a problem. From my understanding, from my understanding, I learned that when somebody is registered, they should not be allowed around children, point blank, period. The fact that 11 years after his conviction and being registered for 11 years to this point, remember this is 2015, he is still allowed to work around children. I don't know if this was a Nickelodeon thing, if this was a Viacom thing, or if this is just kind of like how Hollywood has always been, which, spoiler alert, it probably has always been this way, but now, as the child actors we grew up with in my generation are speaking out, I think this is the best chance to hold Hollywood accountable for just blatantly like being a boys club uh, for the most part, you know? I just have questions about how this person is a registered offender. How are they still allowed to work around children? 
like i don't care about the technicalities i don't understand why somebody i hope vexed well even if they did they, they still were allowed to work on sets with kids i don't i don't get how you can hire someone and you probably look them up and saw that conviction i don't know if you know states have different laws about you know looking up your criminal record what have you i guess whatever but i feel like when it comes to people being on certain lists i'm just kind of confused why he was allowed to work in hollywood ever again you know but then if you really think about it hollywood has been like a cesspool for this kind of behavior so it's honestly not that shocking that someone like Brian Peck is still able to get a job in Hollywood. So let's come back. Let's come back. Let's come back. Sorry, I took a little long break because I had to pull up some more notes. Let's go to a Forbes article, which kind of outlines the key points of Drake Bell's story. They also bring up uh, Drake's uh, Drake Bell's um, 2021 incident. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. I would just like to say in advance what Drake Bell, in my personal opinion, I still don't think what he did was okay. However, comma, he can still be a victim at the same time. What, how you ever feel, you can both be victim and predator, okay? I would just like to make that clear because I know some people are going to definitely point out um, the 2021 incident with Drake Bell, which again, I'm going to talk about in a little bit. So let's just go over the key points that Forbes uh, would like to outline. So from the Forbes article, it says, the Drake and Josh star alleges Brian Peck sexually abused him when he was 15. And the new investigation discovery is called Quiet On Set, the dark side of kids TV. Again, it's set to air near the Kids Choice Awards uh, time. Brian Peck, no relation to Josh Peck, which I've already pointed out, worked as a dialogue coach for shows like All That and The Amanda Show, which Bell acted on before getting his own show in 2004. Brian Peck, who was 43 at the time, was arrested in Los Angeles in 2003 for lewd acts with a minor while coaching the victim at Brian Peck's home, which occurred around two years before the arrest according to a statement from the LAPD. The investigation started after the minor's family reported to the police that the dialogue coach abused the child over a course of six months. Brian Peck was later sentenced to 16 months in prison and registered as an offender in October of 2004. And once again, I will say once again, I do not understand how someone like this is able to keep a job in Hollywood. I don't get it. I don't understand. This is the first time Bell is speaking out about the alleged abuse and revealing himself to be the victim in Brian Peck's case as the minor has remained anonymous, according to the docuseries. Forbes has reached out to Nickelodeon and representatives for Bell and Peck for comment. Nickelodeon is not going to respond. However, comma, I think they should. I think this is getting way too, like the jacuzzi is getting way too hot for Nickelodeon. They have to make a statement. I know they made some crappy statement about Dan Schneider a couple years ago. I think that was just to save their own ass. And even then, nobody was really buying that shit. I feel Nickelodeon has to come out and say something. Even if it's, you know, hey, you know, we didn't take care of our child stars. We really apologize, but we want to do better in the future. Like something, give us something. Just so nobody tries to call me out about it. We're going to talk about Drake's, Drake Bell pleading guilty. So let's just talk about it. This is also from the Forbes article in a tangent area. It says, uh, Drake Bell pleaded guilty to child endangerment charges in 2021 after he was accused of grooming and having sexual contact with an underage man. The victim claimed Bell began grooming her at the age of 12, and his, messages, and his messages became blatantly sexual when she turned 15. 
After accepting a plea deal, Bell was later sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service in July of 2021. Bell spoke about the convictions in the uh, 2021 Instagram video, said, saying the allegations were entirely false and wrong, and he claimed he only accepted a plea deal to end things quickly. He said his actions were inappropriate, but claimed he was unaware of her age and only interacted with her via text messages. He did not have any physical contact. We have kind of talked about this kind of thing with James Charles for those that have you know, watch my videos before. We have talked about this with James Charles already. Even if you are unaware of Sony's age, I feel, and even some laws still state that the adult is still responsible for their actions. Just because you didn't know their age, that does not make it okay. I wanted to point that out. I'm not saying I'm like a Drake Bell like fan after him speaking about his truth. However, comma, like I've said in the like near the beginning of the video, we do need to, well, for me, I definitely want to give my support to the victims of Nickelodeon shenanigans, the Dan Schneider era, the Brian Peck deal, all that stuff, right? I still feel that they deserve our support. We can separate the two things and say, you know, this is bad, but also what happened to you is also bad. I feel like that's fair across the board. If you want to disagree with me, I will hear you out. I'm not going to like bombard you and call you like dumb or anything. If you feel like Drake Bell still doing what he did and taking a plea deal, he's still like not a good person. Fair. I'm not going to convince you otherwise. I like I just said, I still think. He was extremely irresponsible. And even though, again, you did know their age, I feel like you were still responsible. Like you should still be responsible for that. So I just wanted to talk about that for a little bit. The Forbes articles did go on another tangent, which I think I've already brought this up, which was about the Boys Meets World stars, Ryder Strong and Will Freddy alleged on their podcast last month, apparently, that Brian Peck groomed them while he was a guest star on their show. The two claimed that Brian Peck befriended them while on the show, thought he was about 20 years their senior, and would often hang out with them at parties and dinners outside of filming. Freddie and Brian Peck called him after his 2003 arrest and made it seem like he was being manipulated and taken advantage of by the child star involved with the case. Strong, first of all, you're going to victim blame a child. You're gonna victim blame a child? Okay, that's that's wild. <laughs> um, Strong and Freddie supported Brian Peck in court and wrote letters of support to the judge over the case, though they claimed they weren't told the full story. The two later went on to express shame for supporting Brian Peck during this uh, his trial. The fact that this Brian Peck person really reached out to become or try to make himself seem like a victim in this is nothing new when it comes to um, these types of people like getting any type of support they can. It definitely felt like, from what I just read, it felt like a smear campaign against, again, a child at the time. We're gonna victim blame, once again, we're gonna victim blame a child and we're gonna make sure they feel like isolated and stuff. And yet I, I don't, I don't know how to finish that. Like, I don't know how to finish that sentence off, but it, it just, again, it's just really gross to me. And we are on 30 minutes. And if you are still around, thank you. Um, again, I just felt like this is important to talk about. And I don't know, again, I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't know how many cuts I'm going to make for people that, you know, made me laugh and, you know, made me cry, whatever you have. Um, when I was younger, I feel like it's only right to be there for them now when they were there for me back then. Okay. So that again, for those that don't know why I wanted to talk about this, that is why I wanted to talk about this. Now, I think one of the big, 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 um, things that really kind of broke the camel's back on all of this stuff resurfacing was Jeanette McCurdy. Now, if you don't know who Jeanette McCurdy is, she was the one that 
uh, wrote a book that said, you know, I'm glad my mom died. Um, I'm probably paraphrasing the title. I'm sorry. I just don't have it in front of me right now. She wrote about her experiences on um, the Sam and Cat set, um, iCarly set, and she just felt like very treated differently. Her mom wasn't really, you know, that good to her. She mentions the creator in her book, but a lot of people have kind of deduced that the, the creator is Dan Schneider and even seeing some of the things she talks about in her book. And I'm just going to, you know, I'm going back to Daily Beast again because they covered the Jeanette McCurdy um, stuff back in 2002. I believe it was 2002 at this time. So we're gonna pick up where uh, they talk about Dan Schneider abruptly leaving Nickelodeon and it states as follows. Schneider's abrupt exit from Nickelodeon raised eyebrows in 2018. At the time, Deadline reported that members of Schneider's staff had filed multiple complaints of abusive behavior against him. Causes for concern reportedly included Schneider's well-documented temper and his previous tweets complaining, uh, containing photos of young female actors' toes. I remember there was a time on Nickelodeon where they would ask fans to send pictures, or I can't remember. Wait, no, was it Nickelodeon or was it Dan Schneider's Twitter? All I remember is that there was like this Sam and Cat thing where people were, they were asking for pictures of kids' feet. Can't remember if it was Dan Schneider's account or was it Nickelodeon's account. Either way, that's gross. I hate that. That's nasty. Other issues included bloating, uh, bloated budgets and grueling production hours, as well as Schneider's uh, production and office space with shows outside his own shingle um, were also listed as contributing factors. Nickelodeon, for their part, kept their statement vague. Following many conversations together about the uh, next directions and future opportunities, Nickelodeon and our longtime creative partner, Dan Schneider, Schneider's Bakery, have agreed to not extend the current deal, the statement read, in part. Um, the network thanks Schneider for his immeasurable contributions to Nickelodeon. You mean the contributions to traumatizing a bunch of child stars? In a portion of the memoir punished, published by Vanity Fair, McCurdy describes the creator's alleged inappropriate behavior, including mess massaging her at work. Again, she's a minor at this time. What is wrong with you? Photographing her in a bikini, pressuring her to drink while under age as she describes being offered the alcohol mccurdy writes the creator is doing the thing that i've heard from my co-stars that he does with every new star of a show that he's making he takes you under his wing you're his favorite mccurdy also alleges that she turned down a three hundred thousand dollar offer from nickelodeon that would have prevented her from speaking about her experiences with the network, specifically related to, related to the creator. Let me just put that out there, Nickelodeon. Remember, kids friendly Nickelodeon. Wanted to pay hush money so this type of information never reached the public. I just want to say that again. I just want to say that again. Nickelodeon offered hush money for someone to not speak about their childhood trauma because of what one of their key producers did to them. Allegedly. 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 I'm just like, allegedly really doesn't save commentary channels, by the way. It's just something, you know, that we say. But in the end, it really doesn't protect us for real, for real. WTF McCurdy writes, Nickelodeon has offered me $300,000 in hush money to not publicly talk about my experience on the show, my personal experience of the creator's abuse. This is a network with shows made for children. Shouldn't they have some sort of moral compass? Shouldn't they at least try to report to some sort of ethical standard? Question mark. 
no, they're not going to do that. Nickelodeon, from from my disappointing point of view, it, it just seems like they care about the revenue you can provide. Um, the star treatment is allegedly there, where if you're not really the star of the show, they don't really care about you. Um, because um, from what I remember, Jeanette McCurry talks about how Ariana Grande like got to like do all these things that she couldn't do. So it's not that surprising that, you know, Ariana Grande's experience on the show was great. Uh, Jeanette McCurdy's experience on the same show was awful. It's not that surprising that star treatment is a real thing. The article then continues and says Schneider denied ever having behaved inappropriately with anyone at work and said he did not leave Nick on bad terms. Instead, he attributed his departure to a period of exhaustion. He called the online discussion surrounding his shows use of feet ridiculous and added the comedy, the comedy, I'm sorry, was totally innocent. This is the same show that Danielle Monet said, like there was inappropriate jokes. Uh, Dan Schneider would uh, fight for more revealing outfits for the kids. This is my favorite part of the article. It says Viacom CBS 2018 investigation found no evidence of sexual misconduct on Schneider's part, the Times reported, but determined he could be verbally abusive with coworkers. This is legitimately like when there's like a police officer is probably corrupt and uh, probably racist. Okay. And then the police department uh, investigates their own people and says they did nothing wrong. So Viacom, who owns Nickelodeon, by the way, Viacom is basically saying, yeah, well, nothing happened. He was just a little mean to some people. It's giving cover up. Allegedly, it's giving cover up. Okay. Does this not drive people mad? I feel like this is driving this is driving me mad. You know? This is gonna be like the last news clipping I'm going to pull from. This is from Pop Sugar, and this is about Danielle Monet's experience that I've kind of already talked about, but let's talk about it one last time. Over the years, complaints against Schneider have continued to service. And in August 30th, 2022, investigation by Insider. People who have worked with Schneider came forward with claims that the young stars were sexualized. Daniela Monet, who I've already talked about, who starred in Victorious, alleged that she felt certain scenes in the show were too sexual, such as a scene where she applied lip gloss while eating a pickle. She was also told, also, pickle, like pickle boy. That's a callback. She also told the outlet that she felt many of the cast outfits were too sexual. Two anonymous sources apparently told the outlet that Schneider often fought for more revealing outfits during the behind the scenes debate about costumes. Sources also alleged that Schneider had young stars sit on his lap and frequently texted them outside of, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, okay? Because I don't, I, I actually don't know what this docu-series is gonna be about. I mean, I know what it's gonna be about, what, but what I'm saying is, I don't know all the evidence that's gonna be in there. I don't know who, like all the stars that are gonna be in there. I've seen, you know, faces I haven't seen in years. I am wondering, and this is just me, and this is, I'm not the only one that feels this way. I am wondering if Amanda Bynes is in this docu-series and it just hasn't been revealed yet. So hear me out. For those that have not kept up with Amanda Bynes, you know, she kind of disappeared for a while. Um, she just recently started like coming back and like making videos on TikTok, I think. And a lot of people were concerned about where she was and how she's been. It looks like she's doing well for herself right now. So I'm glad to see Amanda Bynes doing so well. When the docuseries came out, Amanda Bynes' name was like the number one name I feel like people were talking about, right? Because they, some people pulled up videos from back in the day when I guess it was the Amanda show. I think this was the Amanda show. I don't think this was all that because Amanda looked a little bit older. Um, where Dan Schneider was just kind of being really weird with her in a video. And it was like a behind the scenes video. So I, I don't, I don't know. Now, 
Am I sitting here saying that something did happen to Amanda Bynes? No. However, comma, what I am saying is she was on two shows that were run by Dan Schneider. One being All That, and then the other, of course, being The Amanda Show, which was her show. And seeing as how Drake Bell had his own traumatic experience, and seeing how all these previous child stars from back in the day are having damn near the same experience, I am very curious if there are other stars that still haven't spoke out yet. And for me, Amanda Bynes' name just came to my head. Again, nothing probably happened, and I'm not saying that it did. But what I'm saying is, she was on two shows with the guy. There's like some videos of behind the scenes stuff where he's being weird. So circumstantially, I just feel like there's something. Of course, not my story to tell. So if Amanda ever, if that is true, if Amanda ever feels like talking about it, we're here for her. I hope that if she does speak out one day, if something did happen we give her the full support just like i hope people are giving everybody that's going to be in this docuseries full support i even hope people give drake bell full support again i know what what he did was like super dumb super inappropriate i'm hearing you right but in this one circular instance i think we need to give all these stars our support i feel like we need to give all these stars like this could be this could be like the one and only chance to hold hollywood accountable for all of this this could be the one chance that we get as a public i think i've said everything i needed to say this video is very long so if you made it this far i'm thankful for you again i will leave all of the links to the news articles that I have referenced down below if you want to read the full thing. I encourage you to please, of course, do your own research. There's, I, I barely even scratched the surface of this Nickelodeon stuff, this Dan Schneider stuff. There are so many other videos that have gone into deeper depths about this. I, I encourage you to please look them out. I really do. I really don't have much else to say, except, you know, thank you for staying here. Thank you for hearing me out. As someone that has like loved, again, loved all these actors when we were younger and seeing how much they've been hurting as, you know, we've gotten older, I feel like it's finally time to give them that support that, you know, how I say it, they, they were there for us. So again, I'm saying this for like a third time in the video, let's be there for them. And I think that's all I really got to say about that. Once again, it is Malcolm. Well, that's me. I've been yap it, yap yapping on this mic for a really long time. It's about like two in the morning now. I've recorded for 50 minutes. Definitely gonna cut down a lot of this audio because I think I rambled on a little too much. So without further ado, it's me, it's Malcolm. I wish you well. I wish you good health. And I will see you again. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not yesterday. Maybe not today, but I will see you again next time.